What's up guys, my name is Matt with The Horror Connection, and today we're going to be talking about The Haunting of Hill House, the 10-part miniseries based on the 1959 novel by Shirley Jackson. The director, Mike Flanagan, is on a roll right now, and currently one of my favorite in the genre. The attention to detail used in Hill House is nothing short of amazing. Now some of you might have noticed a few of the extra occupants of Hill House, but if not, let's take a look. Again, Mike Flanagan's attention to detail and the extra time and effort it took to put these in when they're literally on screen for maybe half of a second is amazing. Now here I wouldn't expect you to see this one on first go. Um, you have to kind of blow the exposure out to even see it. Here is without the exposure blown out all the way. This is what it would look like on your actual screen. Pretty much nothing. Kind of looks like the outline or the silhouette of uh, one of the strangers characters. Uh, but that's about it. A few moments later uh, we still see him in the background here. And we're going to see three quick ones by the stairs. That's close. Again, I had to slow this down so you could even appreciate them being there, but they're literally on screen for maybe half of a second. Uh, this one here, notice how the figure slips back into the abyss as you they blur them out. I decided when Steve was little. No offense. <laughs> so yes, he knows the Gospels. He's also familiar with the Talmud. The Torah. Uh, this is the only one in episode two I've seen. Uh, we have two back to back, one in the garden no. and then one in this dining room. Um, and they even show us what it looks like without them there. So we can be sure that it is an actual ghost there. He made this? I designed it, yeah. I designed them. Uh, Daddy built stuff. Anything? Here's another one that's real Sorry. quick. On screen for maybe less than a second. This is another one I had to brighten up quite a bit for you to even see, but yet it is there. Uh, this one is the what I like to call the kitchen ghost. Uh, you see her in this dining room kitchen area quite a few times, and it even looks like she recognizes it. This one I didn't actually see until I was editing this video. Um, it just looks like a piece of the wall, but you can actually see the hand here. And just a few moments later, we have another one under the stairs. This is one of the more blurry ones where it's barely, barely in the background. Honey? Honey? What's wrong? This is another quick one. It's going to come in the hallway right here. Almost looks like Uncle Fester. I'll call Peter to bring some guys tomorrow. And another one almost immediately. Now notice the white face, and then when they pan in and they go to the next shot, it disappears behind them. You know, your dad was telling me a story about the wine you found when cleaning up the cupboard. And here's another very quick one on screen for less than a second. Theo, I need you to get Luke and Nell to the car. You get in, lock the doors. Don't unlock them until you see me come outside. Do you understand? Oh, what's happening? Get them to the car. I need to get Steve and Cheryl. You want this? This guy stayed well, you the are entire a big boy scene, now. although I could have done it down so to see him at the beginning and then at the end when they focus on him. Hey. What Directly after the bowling hat man, uh, we see what tables, looks like the same ghost colors. that we saw earlier back in episode Four two. Seems to be that they're stuck to these particular rooms. And, and leather. Uh, mom and dad sitting in leading chairs that face each other. Smaller ones for. Uh, I said I've highlighted right. this area right here so you can pay attention to that. Notice right here, there's nothing. And then when we switch two. views to the wider pan, we can see a ghostly face in the mirror. We got two. It must be stuck. Maybe we can drop some other stuff to shake it loose. Like what? There are some rocks in the garden. Pretty ones. They seem to like using this little offshoot room right here to put ghosts in just for this little pan shot down. Right here, I've brightened this yeah, one up quite mm. a bit. I'm not really sure how I feel about this one. You can really only see the legs, grab a blanket? but yeah. this is the best shot I can get of it. Not sure about this one. We take care of the house. It takes care of us. So why would you do that? I, I this happens to be my favorite one. Chalk. 
yesterday. On the patio. Look how they focus in right here. Oh, I love that so much. What happened? Would it like seems to be a game? little kid ghost who might have just been playing with chalk on the wall like a little kid would. I cut this scene down quite a bit, but uh, if you watch it for yourself, it's sitting there for quite a bit. And then they move it to right here. Watch closely, you can see it move. You didn't. You can tell with your hand. Although there are no spooks here, I did want to applaud Sorry, the I'm camera work and late. the extra manpower that's that went okay. into making this cool little opening scene possible um, from all accounts uh, in episode six oh the opening God. sequence is about 15 was, minutes uh, and i do not see a cut in here this looks like one long fine. take Sorry, and i just wanted to applaud thanks for being here that's okay how was your flight uh, well, you, you have a beautiful home it was uh oh this is the this is the business side of the... Fine. I saw many people online saying that episode six had no ghosties in it, other oh, than surely. the obvious ones, like this one here. Surely. You. I'm not sure if they were accounting for these statues, though. Just put batteries in. Okay, I saw many people online talking about how they thought statues were moving, and uh, I'm going to show you one right here. I'll check the library in the kitchen just to be sure. Notice the face looking left. Be right back. I kept this scene intact so you can get a sense of just how long they had to switch the statue out and get the other one in place. Either that or it was one of them people that just dressed up like a statue that you see the Renaissance Fair. Kitchen, just to be sure. The difference is pretty obvious. Nelly. This one, we're going to be looking at this doorway right here. We get just the slightest amount of face. Fuck you! Men, I'm highlighting this area right here you. so you could tell the difference between uh, this and the upcoming spook. Now this is the area we're going to be focusing on right here. Notice the lines of the sheet going horizontal. So good. Right here you can kind of see the arm. There's the head. Again, the sheets. Look at the wrinkles going left and right. I saw a lot of people saying that this one was a stretch and that it was just the wrinkles of the sheet. Now we see it back here. We can see the head. Nothing by the sheet, and then when he moves in, back by the sheet. Obviously different, very obvious. This is actually the first one that I saw, and I think this one is the creepiest. Good lord. Sitting there, waiting, I'm gonna keep lurking. Upstairs. Make sure they don't see this. This is one of the more blatant ones, and they even unblur so you can see them in full form. This seems to be the same one we saw in the dining room earlier. Again, it seems to be that the ghosties stay in the room that they're from. Please, don't shout. Abigail's real, but her clothes aren't as cool as yours. They look old, and I thought she'd like new clothes, and you have so many. 
Here's one of their favorite ghost placements right here by the stairs. So much. I like to call this one the big head ghost because it's got a big head. Again, I had to slow this down and brighten it up for you to even be able to tell what it is. And here's the last one, the only one I was able to find in episode 10. This one seems to like to hide behind walls. Again, the attention to detail that Mike Flanagan uses should really be applauded. And I can't wait to see what he has in store for Dr. Sleep. The game ring for Steve. The family ring for Shirley. Treehouse. But it was always the red ring. Put on different faces so he'd be still and quiet while it digested. 